And guys, today is the 30th of September. I think I have a calling to go outside. <laughs> I just was ready to just come and study and get out. Like, that was a goal. Study, get out. Because then I was just like, let me do what I have to do and you know, stay in my country. But now, we move, we move. Because <laughs> let me tell you guys, Omika is very far from Nigeria. <laughs> Calm down, relax, it's enough. <laughs> it's not like I don't like elevation in my life. I love elevation because I am a child of the most high God. And higher, higher, every day. I lead to my Jesus higher, every day. <laughs> Addis Ababa is very cold, guys, very cold. Yo, how you gonna jacket from Nigeria? It ain't gonna do nothing for you, okay? Just triple it. I was already asking myself, oh, precious, precious, precious. How many times did I call you? Who sent me message? <laughs> and, <laughs> I was just looking around, looking around, looking around. Everybody, natural, natural, natural. Eh. Ah, 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 ah. And then another thing I noticed was the shoes of the bankers. <laughs> you know, no jollof fries. Like, why is there no jollof fries? Like, why? I know you guys eat pepe. I don't see you guys. If you guys eat pepe, what pepe? Yes, you guys eat all pepe. <laughs> Even though there's some people that are being good luck, but they don't have good luck. There's some people that are, that are innocent, but they are guilty. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I shy away from holidays, like Christmas holiday. New Year, because it's like always so lonely. Where is mine? Where is mine? <laughs> ah. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those seeing this beautiful face for the first time, you're welcome. <laughs> my name is Precious Ayerinde. I film on faith, relationship, and lifestyle, and I'm currently based in the Commonwealth of Dominica. And guys, today is the 30th of September. <laughs> You guys are not getting it? You, you, you're not getting it? Yes. So today, seven years ago, was when I landed in the Commonwealth of Dominica. So if you want to know if I regret that decision, if, you know, all sorts of things like, how do I feel? You know, am I where I want to be? If you want all those stuff, if you want to hear all those stuff, keep watching. Welcome back guys, but before we go into it, if you're yet to subscribe, what are you waiting for? Please go ahead and click on the subscribe button below. Yeah, click on it. Mm -hmm. Also turn on your post notifications so you'll be notified anytime I post a video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please give this video a big thumbs up so YouTube can recommend this video to not everybody in the world. Don't you want that? Share this video and also comment below. Let me know what you think about this video okay now that we've put that aside yes yeah, seven years ago was when i landed to the commonwealth of dominica and i'm going to spill in the tea well if we call it that <laughs> so let's dive right into it so today seven years ago on the 30th of september i landed into dominica and i came i think i got into i got to school all Saints university by 6 p.m that night that day well, it was not night yet, 6 p.m. But what I just noticed that it was really dark at that time. And I was like, oh, it's really dark by 6 p.m. Okay, okay. <laughs> but hmm, I'm going to tell you about the trip, everything, like from the beginning, okay? First of all, what did I come to in Dominica? How did I hear about Dominica? So I came to study. I came to study medicine. And how did I hear about Dominica? Well, at a point in my life, I just realized, I just woke up one day. In fact, I was, it was not when I just woke up. I was with my friend in my friend's place. And it was just like an afternoon something. I think it was, was it Valentine's Day or something. And I just laid on her bed and I just stood up. I said, I'm traveling out to go study. Okay, by then I was already in school. I was already in a college, studying a course. And I was almost done or something and I just knew that I need I was to study outside like I needed to go outside but before then I was not even one that I wanted to go outside to study so when people were like studying for um IELTS and TOEFL and all those things I was not interested in when they were preparing for SATs I never took any SAT like I would just be sitting there while in high school studying or going for that class and just like me I'm going to University of Ibadan okay I'm going to University of Ibadan Nigeria <laughs> that was my goal okay but like that day, I just felt like, I think, I think I have a calling to go outside. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I just felt. And that was the beginning of looking for which school to go and where to go. But I never knew anything about Dominica. I never heard about Dominica. I just knew there was this Caribbean that people always talk about, Caribbean, Caribbean, we don't have Caribbean skirts. <laughs> and you know, but 
that was just all about the Caribbean that I knew. I mean, when people talk about Barbados, their audience go for honeymoon. Like, that was like the highest. Like, I, I did not know anything about any Caribbean place or any Caribbean country or any, anything like that. So, the countries I was thinking of, first of all, I think China. And there was this, this Schengen University in China Medical School. That was the first one. I was, me and my friend were on it. If she's watching this, I <laughs> and we're like looking for schools. We we're both in college at the same time, and like our room was just up, up above mine, so we we'll come together. I'll be looking for looking for cause like ah, my mom just I I need to go and do my medicine <laughs> because in Nigeria you write something called jam to get into university, and I had a good score, but the university I entered into they not just pick me. <laughs> they didn't even pick me. My right, you're SMLE. I said, you're SMLE. UTM me, that's supposed to be UTM me, like that's supposed to jump exam or something that you write that the university will set for you, something like that. And I'm like, I had, I passed, um, because 200 is a cutoff, and I passed that. Like, why didn't you guys tell me to come? Like, why was my name not there? But um, I was trying to even avoid going to that university of Ibadan at a point because then our advice. What is called as a vice principal? Your yeah, vice principal was like, if he picks you high, if he's changed you high, you high does not really accept pressures. I don't know how true that is. So I told the person that helped us to do the whole arrangements that please change the school for me from you to something else. Just for almost exam day, I saw that person not change it. So that was how I couldn't get into medicine. And the private university I chose, because we had two options. I think it was it two options. The private university I chose were not doing medicine then, so I'm not just interested and that was actually, I said no. <laughs> I did not get the medicine, so I was doing polymer technology in the college, and then I was like, this medicine, we gotta do it. We gotta what? We gotta do it. So, um, China was my first, one of my choice. I think it was my first choice. Then, what other school did I think of? Cyprus, Ukraine. Okay, China, then Ukraine. I don't know, I think Cyprus was in the option. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Ukraine, because I even knew someone that went to Ukraine to study, then I knew that person, and but then my mom was worried about the war because then they had war issue. So she like, mm -mm, no Ukraine. But then she now had like one of her pastor's sister now had a, as a son. One of her pastor's sister has a son that studied in my school. Like it was just mentioned in the five. I think I just finished in the five when I was trying to apply. So my mom was like. Ah, just go to this place, Dominica, this, Dominica, that. So I just went on Google, I just searched, 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 and I did not really see anything much. In fact, the things I was saying, I think I've told you guys before, no TV, um, really Catholic churches that year, and the hurricane, and all those things. And I was just like, you know what, it's just all this matter, right? Let us go. <laughs> so that was how I heard about. Dominica and my school. So what did I know about Dominica? I already shared what I know, like I didn't have much information and I was not really a big fan of YouTube then. So it's not like I even said YouTube like that. And even when I was on YouTube, I was not really saying things about Dominica like that. So I just was ready to just come and study and get out. Like that was the goal, study, get out. Like I was not, I was not one of the Jackpa people. When I say Jackpa, like people that, you know, you want to leave the country to a better place. <laughs> Because then I was just like, let me do what I have to do and you know, stay in my country. But now, we move, we move. <laughs> How did you get to Dominica Precious? How did you land in this country? Because let me tell you guys, Dominica is very far from Nigeria. So I had an agent and that was the person that did most of the flights, booking and all those things. But for application for the school and all, I did all those ones a lot by myself, even though I had see, an agent too that they call and people like that. But anyway, I took four flights to get to Dominica, my brethren. <laughs> four flights, I think it was from Addis Ababa, no, Lagos, Nigeria, to Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa to Brazil, Brazil to either Panama City first, or Trin I think Trin Trinidad and Tobago first, or Panama City. I'm not sure then, for me that's Trinidad and Tobago to Panama City, or Panama City, Panama City to Trinidad and Tobago, and then from that to Dominica. So that was the trip. But it was not an easy trip, okay? Four days, four days to get here. <laughs> that's four days. I think we had two layovers or sleepovers. Um, one was in the hotel, that was at, at Addis Ababa, and the other one was at um, Trinidad in the airport because they did not give us hotel. <laughs> 
But for the flights, it was not bad for me because there were some other students I met at the airport and I think they used the same agent, that's why. Shout out to all of you if you're watching this. <laughs> So I think it made the flight easier. The only thing I didn't like about the flight was any time it was about taking off and landing. Um, the first time from Lagos to Addis Ababa, I think, like the guy sitting beside me noticed I was very uncomfortable. He had to be calming me down, like, sister, calm me down, calm down, you know, I, I, calm down, relax, it's enough. <laughs> anyway, guys, so that was just it. Till now, I don't like anything that just, no. I don't, it's not like I don't like elevation in my life. I love elevation because I am a child of the most high God. And higher, higher, every day. I lead to my Jesus higher, every day. <laughs> but I don't like anything that just suddenly carries me up, like lifts me up. I don't like elevators. I don't like that takeoff of the plane and the landing. Anything that just suddenly, suddenly. Uh, anyway. <laughs> So that was it. Um, Addis Ababa is very cold, guys. Very cold. Your cardigan or jacket from Nigeria, it ain't gonna do nothing for you, okay? Just triple it because that place was cold. When I was at Addis Ababa and the Wi Fi was not be even well by the point, I was already asking myself, oh, precious, 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 how many times did I call you? Who sent you message? <laughs> So guys, as for accommodation, it was kind of sorted out in a way because I have a friend that was coming here, so we just happened to be coming to the same school. So she came ahead of me because I was two weeks late. I was waiting for my passport to come back with my like temporary visa or something like that, if I should call it that. So I was waiting for it to arrive, so I was two weeks late for resumption. So she came earlier and then she got a room and which we planned on, you know, sharing to call down course at that moment, at that period. So that was how it was sorted. Shout out to her. I shout out to Sophie because that really I think just helped me to be able to like blend in fast because there was no time to waste time. So I think it's just better to ask somebody wherever you're going to already, you know, even if the person still a newbie, but not a newbie to your <laughs> not a newbie as your newbie, at least person maybe I saw the accommodation out or something and you know it's it's better that way than when you are a full time newbie. <laughs> So what's my first impression of Dominica? I think I've mentioned it in, I think it's maybe one of my videos at least. Um, just mention one or two things here and there because you know I said the first time I came to Dominica, I already shared our, because I already knew like, they were just saying Google, I don't say Google, I don't say it's Google because now I'm a YouTube partner, okay? <laughs> but what, when I searched then, and it's not even Google's first, what people put on Google. So when I searched then, I didn't really see anything much. So I was ready for the worst, like I was ready to just face it. <laughs> when I came, ah, it even looked better than what I saw. So I think that helped me because compared to like when you already have high expectation, maybe you thought it was supposed to be full of snow, will be falling and to be cold and, and you come here and you're just disappointed, right? So like, I think I was not at that level. So it was, it was better for me. Um, but when I landed, I noticed that oh, it was getting dark at six o'clock, which I think is a normal thing based on the time of the year or something. Well, um, apart from that, by the next day, by the time I went out to like get my SIM card, and <laughs> I was just looking around, looking around, looking around, everybody, natural, 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 eh. Uh, 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 uh. And by that time, that was 2015, like, natural was not a big deal for people in Nigeria. It's just maybe people that went to certain churches or decided to, like, you know, it was not just everybody's thing. Most people relax their hair and wear weaves. They want to learn, but the natural hair thing is not even more than before right so i was like wow this is nice and it felt like i entered into my tv while watching one of the back in the days you know american black american movies so it just felt like wow okay okay and then another thing i noticed was the shoes of the bankers <laughs> and their outfits and with their pop socks you know the shoes the shoes were just giving me that that you know back in the days vibes <laughs> But I think it's cute right now when I see them. It's not like I didn't see it as cute. It was cute too. It was just, you know, I was just surprised because I felt like, ah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love the pop socks thing. I love how they dress actually and the uniform. In Nigeria, they don't wear uniform, you know? They don't, they're not uniformed. So you just dress corporately and yeah, I think the bankers here are nice. Like, the cashiers and everything, but when I join, I always complain because it's like those people are doing you a favor. 
But apart from that, when it comes to food, I didn't really dive in when it comes to like the food in Dominica to like some years back after the hurricane. And the ones I just knew about was the ones that were served during the during lunch because school used to give us food at lunch time. It was after the hurricane I really indulged in Dominican food, but prior to that, during lunch time at school, pilau my fave in a way, in a way because <laughs> but it's still like a fave, right? But and their fried rice was not a fried rice, you know, no jollof fries. Like why is there no jollof rice? Like why? <laughs> So yeah, but I've come to like Dominican food now because at first when I was like, first time I tasted Dominican food, I was like, where's the seasoning? Where's the salt? <laughs> Let's not talk about pepe before you guys come and eat me. Because I, I know you guys eat pepe. I don't see you guys. If you guys eat pepe, what pepe? Yes, you guys eat all pepe. <laughs> but like, I was like, and I think it was just the ones I ate at that moment. But it's not everywhere that sometimes even I've eaten some food and then it's more too salty. So I just realized that everybody just puts their salt however they want. I was just not used to it at first. Then I realized, oh, I can add my pepper afterwards. And the taste balanced out. So I'm used to the food now. <laughs> I'm used to the food now. The only time I'll have issues is when there's more pepper. I don't know, I just have issues. But sometimes even without pepper, I can sit it depending on who cooks the food, you know. Cause at the end of the day, I think Dominican food is nice. At the end of the day, it's just that I was not used to it then. But that was just it anyway. How was Dominican been for me? Hmm. That's a roller coaster of emotions, you know, because I have gone through a lot. I've gone through a lot. And that's not because it is Dominican moving, you know, it's Dominica that, you know, made me go through a lot. No, it's just life that played out itself. And yeah. But. How has Dominica been treating me, precious? How has Dominica been treating you? <laughs> okay, I'll just say it's not easy living away from your family like for like all these years. Like, it's not more like I was doing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I was just away, like I've just been away. I've missed out on birthdays, on weddings, on naming ceremonies. You know, in Nigeria, like when a child is born, on the seventh day, I think, they, they like do a party where they like, Call the name of the child, like they tell you the name of the child. They don't, they don't tell you the child before. <laughs> if I give them birth, not like you know the way we see the word name. Like people in the US do, they already even don't know the child before they go to bed. But no, they conceal it till the seventh day, and then they tell you the names of the children. Because the names, because it's more than one name, and names are always meaningful in Nigeria. Don't just give any child your child any name. Name has to carry meaning because names are like prophecy. It's they're powerful, okay? So yeah, because when I'm in Dominica and I ask people what's your name, they don't know. I'm like, okay, you don't know. But in Nigeria is different. Like names have power, I believe. Like a prophecy, just like you're calling something repeatedly. So it's like, you know, even though there's some people that are being good luck, but they don't have good luck. Or some people that are that innocent but they are guilty. <laughs> So yeah, please let me know the Dominicans, like how do you guys name your child? Do you do it before your child is born? Like, like, ow, oh, ow, oh, I don't think I've experienced something like that yet. But yeah, I've missed out on that. I've missed out on my sister's wedding. I've missed out on my friends. Like, <laughs> when I left one of my cousins, she was just like a year about two. And now she's like, I would, almost a decade old. Like, and I'm like, hey, I'm like, I've not even seen my nephew and niece, like, Real life. But thank God for social media. Social media has really been helpful. If not, me, I'd have gone back home. I would have not even left home at first anyway. <laughs> Maybe just for vacation or something. And that means I won't go with my family. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that's that person I, I, I am. But thank God for social media. Knowing that oh, I can just call, that just a phone call away. That has been really helpful. But apart from that, I've also experienced my first and last hurricane in Jesus' name <laughs> here in Dominica. I never imagined like that was going to ever, ever happen to me in my life. Like, oh, we only just hear about these things in geography and learn about them and like that's it, okay? But not just category one, two, three, but five. You have to respect, put, a res put respect on my name, okay? <laughs> just joking, but like that period i lost my properties i lost my clothes my like oh my like some of my things my notes i lost them and i lost my i lost my apartment too like like the apartment did not disappear but it was you know it was really really affected it was really damaged 
And thank God I just, I'm just so grateful that I know this my life because the devil is a what? He's a liar. So yeah, and it's like, I literally became homeless at that point, but that is most story from that time. But like, looking back, I'm just grateful for how far God has brought me and everything. At the end of the day, God has been faithful. Don't I miss my family? Yes, I miss my family. As a matter of fact, I shy away from holidays, like Christmas holiday, New Year, because it's like always so lonely. Like most of the times I spent here, it, I don't know, I just get that lonely vibes. No matter what is being put out there for us to come and do to have fun, it just feels like, like all those periods of times when people are with their family, like, where's mine? Where's mine? <laughs> ah. Now to this question that you're probably hoping I answer, and that is why I regret moving to Dominica. Hmm. <coughs> okay, let me just say that um, I feel like at the end of the day, God makes all things work together for good for us. Um, so those who, are, who love Him, hmm, why is this scripture again? And I think all by God's grace, God has used it to like make me grow, use Dominica and like my experiences here to make me grow. Like rather than you know the comfortability I had at home, like yeah, I have to like wake up wake up and you know like you know oh i never i never worked like for the money i worked because like the um, course i was in you were required to like a two-month sea west program where you can work somewhere and i was not working they were paying me the boss my boss there and his wife like, they literally took me like family my boss took me like his child is indian by the way and because the place was like a, kind of like a factory. He didn't want me working like at all and they were still paying me. <laughs> at least they paid me for that two months. And even when I was coming here, he sponsored, he paid like a thousand dollars out of my tuition fee coming here. And I'm like, like I just never really did anything for money back home. That's my point. Like I wanted something, I got it. But coming here, I'm facing life. You gotta <laughs> You gotta wake up, you gotta you gotta shake up like no no Dominica like things I experienced in Dominica they shook me like they made me wake up wake up wake up wake up fast and, and I'm grateful for that but if <laughs> if I could you know it's what I know right now I mean, probably would have made a different decision about coming here maybe that I'll have come to Dominica for maybe vacation and then maybe stay longer something I don't know based on the vibes like I guess like supposedly but I feel like for schooling now, they're probably going somewhere else because looking at it, I like when you get a student visa, you are not even allowed to work with it compared to like going to a school where you are allowed to work from the beginning, you are allowed to like do certain things, you can actually even settle there. Most people, most students when they come here, they don't stay here, they don't settle here, they go back or they go to UK, US or somewhere else, you know. So I feel like looking at it from that angle, maybe I would have made a different decision. Do I regret coming here? Do you guys think I regret coming here? You guys should answer for me. <laughs> you guys should answer for me. Like, I feel like, um, you know, God makes all things work together for our good. So I used to feel limited at a point, like being here, I used to feel like, uh, I don't know where because I'm coming from a bigger country. So this place just looks small to me and it just felt like I was being confined in a place. I, I used to feel like that up until I started my YouTube channel. Like, and I think I'm that reason because of the opportunities. Like, you know, there are not much opportunities as I would want. Like when maybe one door closes, you have and that one really opened. You want to try this course, you want to try that. You want to, you know, it's not really, I'm not, I don't get that vibe. I don't see that. So it's really made me feel like I was being limited, being here. But um, when I started my YouTube channel, Seeing that people can watch my videos anywhere they are in the world just makes me feel like, ooh, I'm everywhere. It makes me feel not enclosed. And I think and that is nice to feel like that is because, okay, I, it's not like I was also going back and forth, going home, coming back. So it just made me feel like, okay, I'm just enclosed. And it can really be lonely, living alone and very far from your family. Like, you guys, if you see international students, wherever you live, just be nice to them it's not really easy sincerely it's not easy so with youtube i just feel like people are able to like see my potential wherever they are and like i'm not just in a place now should you come to dominica i think yes it's not what i think and you should come to dominica but it depends on why you're coming um if you're coming to school no problem like i feel like you can come to school here yeah? just have your money you have your money, you're good. <laughs> if you're coming as maybe 
to take vacation as a foreigner take vacation why not i think dominica is a very good place to come to for that it's right for nature if you're coming for nature just just come just come 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 to dominica guys <laughs> if you don't want to come to like live permanently yeah there are some things you just have to like look into and i have videos talking about things like that so yeah if you're good you're good so guys this is where i draw the curtain let's draw the curtain <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and um, I'm really grateful to God for this seven years. I thank God for life, for protection. Um, I thank God for everyone who in one way has, you know, has been there for me. Um, I thank God for my family. I thank God for you guys watching me. And if you guys see this video to don't death yet, just, just say God to give me the glory and just, you know, I wish you God for my life. <laughs> because right now, <clears throat> As I'm filming this video, time has gone. But yeah, I'm just really thankful to God for these seven years because I have been thinking about it these past few days that should I do a video about this? Like, I had also the emotions I was wondering, and but I just said, you know what? Let me just do this video, and yeah, that's what we just did. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Go ahead to give this video a big thumbs up. Like this video, that's the big thumbs up there. Yeah, like it. Subscribe to this channel if you are here too. Okay, guys, please turn on your post notification bell so you'll be alerted anytime I post a new video. Please turn it on the icon is just beside the subscribe button. And yeah, please comment. Let me know what you guys think. And you guys, please don't forget to share this video. Share, share, share this video. And before I forget that your girl has been monetized, please. Do not skip the art. Do not what? Skip the art. For those who already don't skip the art, oh, I love you guys so much. And if you skip the art, I still love you, but you know, just help us. Help us out. <laughs> so yeah, please do not skip the art. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, I still remain precious iron day. From me to you, it is bye-bye.